Today, before I get started, I'm going to, I had a friend suggest that maybe the uh, bottom lip was a little too sensuous on uh, Sitting Bull, and I've got to double check that on the uh, photograph I've got of him. It's just, you know, sometimes it takes another eye to check things out. But anyway, I, uh, my next project is going to be of a Chief Crazy Horse. Uh, who uh, was famous for the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And um, I, there are no photographs of Crazy Horse, so there's nothing out for me to go by as far as likeness. I've got a uh, model friend, uh, someone who has studied everything to do with uh, Native American uh, culture and, and history and clothing. Uh, he's one of the top uh, Indian models in the country. Uh, many great and famous artists have hired him because of that authenticity. Uh, he recreates the clothing that they would have wore and uh, the uh, headdresses and everything else uh, exactly the way the uh, Native Americans would have worn them. Worn them. And uh, he's an uh, absolute expert on uh, Native American history. I asked him, what should I look out for? What should I be mindful of if I do a sculpture of Crazy Horse? And he told me that uh, Crazy Horse looked like uh, two gentlemen. One, a uh, actor from the uh, silent movie era, William Hart, and the other, uh, Little Hawk, a Lakota warrior. Also, I think a cousin of uh, Crazy Horse or whatever. He was related somehow to Crazy Horse. And if you look at the two faces, they are similar in uh, structure. And he says that the nose of Crazy Horse would not be as uh, Indian looking as on Little Hawk, but would be uh, less uh, that kind of a nose. So I've got something to go by and uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. And I'm thinking of doing it in Monster Clays, but, but I, I've got to make that decision at some point because Monster Clay is a uh, different material for me and it takes a special, uh, well it takes a lot of practice to use it right. So anyway, let's get started on uh, this piece. I'm going to finalize it today, hopefully, and have it ready to go to the foundry either Monday or Tuesday of next week. All right, everybody. Be right back. Time to play with some clay. Yep, he is right. I've got the uh, bottom lip a little too full. And uh, now that I look at the uh, photograph of uh, Crazy Horse, I, I mean, now that I look at the photograph of Sitting Bull, I can see that. And so I'm going to uh, change that. Not quite as full, the bottom lip, but it is rounded at the uh, at the outer edge of the uh, lip. Let's see if I can get that. There's not quite as much undercut under, underneath the uh, bottom lip either. An artist can get a little too close to his work and he can't see things quite like somebody who is uh, away from it. And... Uh,
Now, I apologize for yesterday's video. I had done, gotten done, I had finished editing the video yesterday, and uh, it had sound on the, on the, uh, video editing program, but when it rendered out and uh, there was no sound on the uh, rendered version, and uh, I don't know why that happens. It's happened a couple of times in the past, not often. It's on uh, Sony Vegas or movie studio uh i can't remember the version it's uh, i think it's movie studio 16. it used to be sony vegas but it's not anymore And I had deleted the videos. There are 12 videos that I shot of yesterday's session with uh, Sitting Bull. And uh, I deleted all 12 off my computer before I found that out. And I normally don't do that until I find out for sure that everything's worked. And so that's my my fault, not uh, Sony Vegas's. Our movie studio. So as you can see, I've laid uh, Sitting Bull back onto a... Uh, board and onto a blanket or towel to uh, uh, soften or not cause any damage to the clay. Now it's a matter of filling in where I can't see when it's standing up. Underneath the robe and such. All right, I'm going to call it quits for today, and the only reason I am is because I see some things I've got to address, and I can't do it until i got a full day. And uh, I was going to take this in Monday, but I think I'm going to have to work on Monday on this piece, because uh, at this angle I can see some things at the bottom of his nose and the bottom of his chin that I need to address. So I'm going to call it quits for now. If I don't call it quits now, my video won't be out until midnight, and I don't want to do that. So I've spent uh, several hours already just filling that I didn't video, so. But at this angle, you just see things that have to be done. I've got the uh, underarm all done. I've got the hat, well, not necessarily all done yet. I've got one little stretch right here. 
that needs filling. The more I can do to make it a holiday for the uh, mold maker when he makes a mold of this piece, if it's not, what I'm trying to say is, if it's not overly difficult and he has an easy time making the mold, the cost of mold making goes way down. And that is a big cost when you're doing the first copy of your uh, sculpture. And it also makes it cost costly to cast because if you have deep undercuts and holes and things that you didn't fill in, it's going to cost you more to clean the mold after it comes out of the uh, shell. And the shell is the last mold they make of the wax copy that they make from the rubber mold for the bronze and uh, if you do a search on YouTube you'll see videos that show you the process of mold making and casting and believe me what I'm doing right now is saving me probably a couple hundred dollars So I'll say goodnight with this final fill-in here on this side. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful Sunday. And uh, I wish you all good health. Especially since we're all shut in. <laughs> all right, good night. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.